Uh, welcome to our seminar about uh, Polish migration uh, in Norway. The seminar is organized by uh, internet portal Moja Norvegia in cooperation with the Polish Embassy here in Oslo, uh, with uh, Polish Connection, Michael, PKS Oslo and Fjordland. Today we want to present some latest research about Polish migration and Polish community here in Norway. We we'll talk about employment, about social mobility, participation in cultural life, integration and transfer future. We have great guests with us today, but uh, first, please welcome the ambassador of Polish Republic to Norway, Mr. Stefan Schmur. We are very glad to be here. Would you like to say... Uh, Good morning, uh, My name is uh, Stefan Schmor. I, I, I would like to uh, underline my name because uh, some, uh, even uh, Poles, have a difficulty to remember my name. <laughs> that uh, maybe it's not bad to say that my name is Stefan Schmor. Uh, distinguished guests, dear panelists, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to open this seminar about the Polish citizens in Norway. The Embassy of the Republic of Poland in Norway is obviously interested in participating in discussion on this subject and therefore I thank the organizers of the seminar for the invitation. At present, Poles constitute the largest immigrant group in Norway. Statistics do vary significantly, but official figures point to over 77,000 Polish people currently residing in this country. This fact alone implies a wide array of issues to be discussed, ranging from the situation of migrants themselves to their influence, if any, upon the Norwegian political and social life. Future developments in all these areas are of the great interest as well. In this context, the initiative of organizing the present seminar by the website Moja Norwegia was welcomed by the Embassy of the Republic of Poland in Oslo with great enthusiasm, as in the case with most projects that have to do with fostering exchange of views on the subject of Polish citizens in Norway. It is very important that similar discussions are held as often as possible and that Norwegian institutions are engaged in such exchanges of views. I therefore hope that this valuable initiative will be continued. The basis of today's discussion about Polish citizens in Norway is a report of, on integration of Poles in Norway, including cultural integration, produced by the Moja Norvegia website. Of course, there have already been some very subtle and knowledgeable analysis of Polish migration to Norway. They should obviously be taken into account while discussing the situation of Polish migrants in Norway. Let me mention just two such analyses. In 2011, the nuclear researcher, Jakub Kozimirski, very welcome, Mr. Doctor. Published in the periodical International Politic, an extensive article on the Polish diaspora and Norwegian forest policy. This year, Dr. Jon Holden Freiberg from the Fafo Institute, who is one of the panelists in a today discussion, published his PhD dissertation, The Polish Worker in Norway, 
emerging patterns of migration, employment and incorporation after the European Union's Eastern enlargement. Mention of Polish migrants in Norway, we also made in a recent study, Norway and the New Map, uh, sorry, Norway and the New World Map, released as part of Ministry of Foreign Affairs Project Reflex. The Embassy of Republic of Poland follows with great interest everything that is written about the Polish citizens in Norway. On a on moral right note, I can also tell you that the subject has not only attracted scientific attention. In 2011, there has been an opera titled Operation Opera about Polish workers building the Norwegian opera and this year there has just been published a novel about Polish guest workers in Minnesota. The report of, on integration of Polish citizens in Norway released by Moja Norwegia shall be presented in greater detail. Before we acquaint ourselves with the result of this report and embark on discussion on the report's conclusion, let me raise some issues that I think may be worth giving attention during today's discussion. Talking about the current migration of Poles to Norway, we, are, we were mostly concerned with particular type of movement of people, the labor migration, resulting, as we all know, from Poland's European Union accession in May 2004, that is nearly 10 years ago. We are therefore concerned with the relative new phenomenon which may account for the fact that is the opinion of several commentators, Polish migrants have not yet gained significant influence on the Norwegian politics. This is one of the conclusions of the recent study undertaken under the auspices of the Norwegian Minister of Foreign Affairs as a part of famous reference <coughs> project, to which I allude at the beginning of my speech. The authors of the chapter on migration note, nevertheless, that the new incomers from Poland may in the future want to assume a more active role in shaping Norwegian foreign policy. Norway is a very friendly country in terms of approach to foreign nationals living here, and this is borne out by the treatment and support Polish citizens receiving in this country received from relevant Norwegian institutions. It is a fitting opportunity to thank Norway for that. But there is, in fact, more about this. Presence of so many Poles in Norway is a very important component of the Polish-Norwegian political relations and, as I am happy to hear a numerous occasion meeting by Norwegian colleagues, it is a fact greatly valued by Norway. It is gratifying that the movement of Poles to Norway, to which we devote the present seminar, is coupled, albeit is still for smaller measures, with the reserve movement of Norwegian students to Poland, and mostly medicine students. Likewise, it is important and very valuable that EEA and Norwegian <coughs> funds facilitate cooperation between Polish and Norwegian institutions administration and, perhaps, most meaningfully, people, not least in the field of culture. By way of example, the opera on Polish construction workers was one of the very many EEA and Norwegian funds projects. This context and exchanges of experience that take place during implementation of the EEA and Norwegian funds supported projects unite our societies with each other's and, in further perspective, contribute to the development of the Polish-Norwegian relations. Polish migration to Norway that stems from the European Union enlargement has its distinctive features and is to be held separate from the, for example, migration on political grounds which characterize movement of Polish people to, among others, Norway in the 1980s. As we reflect more generally on the Polish diaspora in Norway, interesting questions may arise with regards to the relation between earlier, mostly political, migrants 
and those who came to Norway rather recently. As I approach my conclusions, let me raise one more question. The fact that the recent migration of Polish citizens to Norway is primarily motivated by practical reasons of work and related issue of emergence of certain patterns of employment lies in the ground of certain fixed views on typical Polish migrants in Norway. These views, in large part rooted in reality, should nevertheless not constitute the full picture of the Polish diaspora in Norway. Apart from greatly valued construction workers and craftsmen, there is a whole range of Polish citizens working in all kinds of Norwegian institutions and companies and successfully participating in Norwegian scientific, political and social life. In this context, I deeply appreciate the annual context of standing call in Norway. I deeply appreciate the annual contest of standing call in Norway. Accords will deserve recognition to these eminent personalities. To give but few examples, the outstanding poll in Norway statute has already been awarded to Professor Nina Witoszek, the Nupi researcher Dr. Jakub Kocimirski, and the first Norwegian Olympic medalist in fencing Bartosz Biasecki. As we shall have a panel on the image of polls in the Norwegian media, it is my firm hope that successive editions of the contest receive higher attention from the Norwegian media. Distinguished guests, dear panelists, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you a faithful discussion and hope that this seminar will be a starting point for more comprehensive and systematic exchange of views on the Polish diaspora in Norway. For the benefit of both Poland and Norway, thank you very much. But uh, I also I would like to apologize you because Due to my other commitments, I, I unfortunately I must leave you. But there will be the, my deputy, new deputy, Mrs. Magojata, and also the, uh, the others, uh, my colleagues from the Polish embassy. And at the end of my relatively short speech, I would like to say something in our mother language, in Polish. Dzień dobry państwu. Chciałem serdecznie podziękować za zaproszenie, a jednocześnie zachęcam bardzo wszystkich tutaj obecnych, przedstawicieli różnych organizacji do zjednoczenia naszego wspólnego wysiłku tak, żeby Polacy mieli wspólne, jedno, mocne przedstawicielstwo, bo tylko takie pozwoli nam współpracować efektywnie z naszymi przyjaciółmi w Norwegii. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. We are very glad to have you here today. Now uh, we would like to present some latest research about <coughs> Polish community in Norway. Uh, Ms. Aleksandra Janaczyk. Uh, sociologist from the University in uh, Gdansk, living in, uh, here in Oslo. She's made her research uh, together with the internet portal Moja Norvegia. And uh, her analysis are based on interviews reported thousands of Polish people living here in Norway. The main topics are participation in cultural life, the level of integration, the use of a knowledge of Norwegian language, and plans for the future. Please welcome Alexander. Good morning, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Before uh, I start presenting results, I would like to say a couple of uh, words about the research itself, about our background, and the uh, reasons that made us uh, conduct such a um, such a research. Um, Moja Norvegia, which uh, means uh, my Norway, is uh, the biggest employment uh, social web portal for Poles uh, in Norway. They provide uh, news um, concerning Norway, uh, news uh, concerning immigrants, in this uh, case uh, Polish immigrants in particular. 
Um, they also provide some other um, useful information as, as well as a forum. And as you can see here, they manage to gather big amounts of people uh, around this place. I think that's it's actually the main forum for Polish people. And uh, when we looked at these numbers, um, we thought that we could and we actually should use the fact that we have access to such a big um, amount of people. And we decided to conduct a research that would let us and everyone else who could be interested in the subject to get to know the group of Polish people residing in Norway a bit, um, a bit better. Uh, considering the nature of uh, medium, meaning that uh, it is a web portal, uh, as well as the fact that our budget's amount of people and time were uh, limited, we decided to use influence survey, uh, which is a tool supporting a technique called uh, small plus uh, which in other words means that um, we published our survey in the internet and we sent a link to it to as many people as we could and then we asked them to send it further to as many people as they could. Um, I should probably mention some uh, shortcomings of uh, this, um, this technique, meaning that we couldn't really control who was, um, who was uh, filling out the questionnaire, uh, which means that um, we have to remember that it's not the best possible group in terms of being representative. But still, we managed to approach really many people, so um, we think and we hope that our research is still valuable. Of course, we were and we are aware of the fact that um, there have been many, probably much more professional, uh, research already conducted. Um, but we had this feeling that most of them were focused mainly on one aspect, meaning um, the work life, which is, of course, the most important reason for Polish people to come here to Norway. Um, it also is um, the main. Uh, it is the thing that is the center of uh, our being here. It's the main thing that Norway and Polish people are kind of interested in. But we decided to look at our aspects of life as well, um, including Polish uh, people as part of bigger society, their integration into Norwegian society, their uh, participation in culture, their social networks, and maybe first and foremost, the Norwegian language. Um, around 2020 people started filling out the questionnaire. Um, exactly 1,021 were patient enough to go through all the questions we had, and that's our final group of respondents, 1,021. Um, I think that we wouldn't be able to approach uh, that many people if we used different techniques. Um, according to uh, Moya Norvegia, and this number is based on traffic on website, there is around 200,000 calls in Norway, which is if I remember correctly, a bit more than official numbers show. Um, I will start uh, presenting our uh, results with the profile of the average Polish immigrant in Norway. I would like to mark that uh, this profile is, of course, a bit simplified. And actually, it is not based on average, it's based on dominant, which means the most common answer to a question. Um, so. Uh, the average Polish person living in Norway is male between 25 and 35 years old. <coughs> he works in the construction industry or he does physical work of some other kind. He is planning to stay here for good, not excluding the possibility of moving back in some cases. He doesn't really participate in the cultural life uh, of Norway. He feels rather well integrated uh, with Norwegian society. And he knows Norwegian, although on a medium or low level. Um, so we forgot about putting mustache on this picture, but uh, sorry for that. Uh, the next thing I would like to talk about is age of our respondents. As I mentioned before, the biggest group of people is between 25 and 35 years old. The next uh, biggest group is the group of people between 36 and 45, uh, 44, I'm sorry, years old. And the third uh, is a group of people between 45 and 60 years old. As we can see here, it's only 2% of uh, people who are not in typical working age, meaning that in theory, 98% of people are able to work uh, to support themselves. Uh, it also means that uh, they can spend the money they earn. And in theory, uh, they make a group of people with big potential in terms of stimulating and positive influence to the Norwegian economy. Uh, the next issue, which is uh, probably one of the most important things we are trying to, um, to 
project, let's say, uh, with our research is a level of uh, Norwegian language among our respondents. Uh, this is not a very professional thing, but uh, before we started um, conducting our research, I couldn't get rid of certain expectations. Meaning that um, I had this image in my head of people, Polish people, who rather are not very good in speaking Norwegian. And I was really very pleased to see that um, I was wrong, apparently. It turns out that 90% of Polish people can speak Norwegian at least a little bit. Uh, as we can see here, 11% uh, percent of Polish people can speak Norwegian fluently. 35% per uh, of people can speak Norwegian quite well. 44%, and that's the most uh, common answer, can speak Norwegian, but only a little. And 10% can speak Norwegian at all. And this number makes me very happy, because, um, as I said before, it means that it is not bad, <laughs> to put it this way. Um, excuse me for a second. Yes, the other thing about language I would like to say is uh, participation in the course, uh, language course. It turns out that 67% uh, of, uh, of our respondents have participated in such a course, or still do participate in one. 23% uh, haven't, but is going to do so in the future. And 10% haven't participated in language course, and what is more, they do not intend to do so. We asked this last uh, group of people of reasons why they do not want to participate in course. And it turns out that two main reasons were lack of money and lack of time. Although 2% uh, of them said that um, they actually don't think they have to know the Norwegian language, apparently they think that there is no point in learning the language. Um, we also asked them who organized the language course they attended, and most of people said that it was themselves, um, meaning that uh, they attended the course in a private language school. 17% said it was their school or university, 15% said it was their employer, and 19% said it was not or other institution of that kind. Um, we can also speak of different forms of language, and it turns out that um, Polish people feel most comfortable with reading in Norwegian, while the thing that is most problematic for them is uh, writing in Norwegian. Um, we also observed pretty obvious for this time, very surprising relationship between the um, level of uh, language and length of residency, and of course it turns out that the longer people live here, the better the language gets. Uh, gets. Uh, it also turned out that um, these who can speak Norwegian well, uh, they are more interested in following current events concerning Norway. Uh, among these who can speak uh, Norwegian fluently, 63% said that they do follow news concerning Norway, uh, while in the group of people who can speak Norwegian at all, it's only 21%. Uh, let's uh, go to the next uh, point, uh, plan to length of stay. Uh, it turns out that only 2% of respondents is uh, for now sure that their stay in Norway is only temporary. 10% of respondents haven't decided yet uh, about their future plans. 17% is planning to stay here longer, although they know for sure that at some point they will get back, get back to Poland. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong direction. 32% uh, wants to stay here longer, but they are still a bit uncertain if they want to stay here forever, or if they are going to go back to home one day. And 38%, and that was the most popular answer, uh, knows for sure that they want to stay here forever. Which, in other words, means that it won't be that easy to get rid of us. When it comes to length of uh, residency, as you can see here, 6% uh, of people have uh, come to Norway, have came to Norway uh, a couple of months ago. 10% have been living here for a uh, 6 to 12 months, 46% uh, and that is the most common answer, have been living here from 1 to 5 years, 34% have been living here from 5 to 10 years, and 4% have been living here for, oh I'm sorry, for, the, uh, for uh, more than 10 years. These numbers basically confirm what um, has already been stated, meaning that the biggest wave of migration came here to Norway after 2004, when uh, Poland accessed the uh, European Union. Uh, next issue I'd like to talk about is level of education. 2% uh, of our respondents had only uh, primary education. 44% of them had secondary education, and that was the most popular answer. 12% uh, of them had vocational education, 13 had higher vocational education, and 29, which was the second most popular answer, had higher education. 
Um, when it comes to the relationship between level of education and line of work, it turns out that um, among these who have primary, secondary, and vocational <coughs> education, uh, the most popular line of work was construction industry or physical work of some other kind. While among these uh, two groups with higher education, um, it was lines of work that might be considered as a bit more prestigious, like human resources, some kind of counseling, um, IT industry, or oil and gas industry. Um, yes, now let's um, move to line of work. Um, again, not perfectly professional thing to say, but um, as we could expect, uh, most of people, or like not most of people, that was the most uh, common answer, was that uh, people work in the construction industry, and that answer was marked by 28% of uh, respondents. Next uh, popular answer, most popular answer, was uh, physical work of some other kind, marked by 23%. Third uh, group of uh, lines of work, uh, marked here as other, is the one that I mentioned before, meaning human resources, oil and gas industry, IT, counseling, and so on. 7% uh, of uh, Polish immigrants uh, work in administration or office, 6% in education, another 6% in transport, 5% work in catering business, 3% work in automotive industry, and another 3% work with commerce. Um, when it comes to the relationship between line of work and length of stay, it turns out that in, all, in almost all of the groups, construction industry and physical work still remain the most popular answers. Um, as uh, mentioned, uh, the more prestigious uh, lines of work, amount of people who mark this option increases a bit with length of stay, but uh, not very noticeable, to be honest. Um, another thing I would like to mention is cultural life. To check the uh, cultural life of our respondents, we are trying to, we are asking them about their participation in certain activities, about their frequency of uh, this participation, about the way they feel about themselves as participants uh, in cultural life, as well as their motivation to do so. Right now, we will present to you uh, results, uh, answers to our question about. Uh, participation in certain activities during the last 12 months of our respondents uh, staying here in Norway. The most popular answer was uh, reading a book, a uh, thing that was done by 32% of our respondents. The next uh, most popular answer was going to a concert mark, marked by 18%. 17% of our respondents went to the movies. 16% didn't do any of uh, mentioned activities. 13% went to a gallery and 4% went to the theater. Uh, as we can see here, these activities that are most popular are rather connected to so-called low culture. Uh, but the thing that is very important to mention is that we also asked our respondents about their cultural habits before they came to Norway. And uh, this picture looked actually very similar to this one, meaning that going to a gallery or going to the theater, uh, which are more associated with higher culture were also the least popular answers. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's pretty important to remember that it might not have looked much differently if these people were in Poland. Um, we did ask uh, these who were not uh, very active in cultural life of reasons why they didn't, why they were not participating that much. And uh, most common answers were lack of time and lack of money. Although some of them pointed at um, a lack of knowledge of Norwegian language, as well as um, lack of cultural offer that could be more interesting or more approachable for immigrants, and especially in this case, um, Polish immigrants. Uh, we also asked people about their level of motivation to participate in Norwegian culture, and it turned out that um, the most popular answer was medium level. Uh, also, some of positive answers were um, was lower than some of negative answers, which basically means that Polish people residing here in Norway might not be very interested in participating in culture here. Um, ergo, I think, or I hope to be wrong actually, uh, culture might not be the best thing to base this mutual uh, cooperation on. Uh, but it's, uh, it's important to mention that uh, these who were more fluent in Norwegian were much more eager to participate in culture, cultural life of Norway 
than these who had um, this level of Norwegian is a bit lower. Um, the last uh, field I would like to mention that I will probably have the most thing to say about is integration. Uh, when we were trying to explore um, this, uh, this aspect of life, we were asking people about the way they feel about themselves as part of Norwegian society. We asked them about their social networks, um, about their opinions about Norwegian people, about Norwegian people, and about the, the way they feel they are looked at by Norwegians, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, here we would like to present uh, results um, and answers to a question if uh, people do feel integrated with Norwegian society. Uh, this a bit controversial picture shows us shows us that 90% of people definitely feel integrated uh, into Norwegian society. Just for the record, we do not promote any deviation here. Yes. Um, Thirty-two percent of people are rather well integrated uh, with Norwegian society. Another thirty-two percent uh, had some problems with describing the way uh, they feel about uh, themselves. Uh, Twenty-one percent uh, claimed to be rather not integrated with Norwegian society, while well, six percent claimed to be definitely not. Uh, integrated with Norwegian society. Uh, we run out of slides, but I did not run out of things I would like to say. Let's move to a nicer, nicer picture. Um, as we can see here, uh, many of them have problems with uh, describing the way they feel about their own integration, as well as um, the fact that uh, both rather answers, meaning rather yes and rather not, were pretty popular. And that can indicate that Polish people do have problems with describing their own place here in Norway. They are still a bit uncertain. How do they feel about this place? How do they feel about themselves being here? Um, we did check uh, the relationship between the level of integration and length of stay. And again, not uh, that surprising. It turns out that the longer people live here in Norway, the more integrated they feel. Um, of course, these who have uh, come here more recently, like people who came here um, during the last couple of months, for example, they had biggest problems um, with describing the way they feel uh, or the level of their integration. But it seems kind of obvious since they didn't have much time to get to know to people to get to know uh, the place that well. It also turns out that there is positive uh, relationship between feeling well integrated and following current events uh, concerning the world. Maybe that these who felt better integrated or more integrated were much more interested in what's going on in Norway. Um, when it comes to uh, social, social networks, uh, first we asked our respondents if they do have any Norwegian support. Because we want to check if maybe this factor can somehow or cannot influence um, other, uh, other features. It turned out that 84% of our respondents do work with Norwegian people. And these people were more, more eager to say that um, they were they were well uh, integrated into Norwegian society. They also had a bit more positive attitudes toward Norwegians, and they did feel a bit more. Um, I will uh, go to this question a bit later, but they basically felt seen in a more positive light by Norwegians than these people who did not uh, have any Norwegians at work, or these who did not know, because we also had question answers like that. Too. Um, 70% of these who do work with uh, Norwegian people uh, maintain some kind of social contact with them after work. Uh, some of them claim that uh, this contact is only sporadic, some of them say that it's quite often. Uh, but almost every tenth person claims to have Norwegians uh, met at work among their closest friends. Um, we also ask people about um, Norwegian friends they met outside of work environments. And um, it actually turned out that it's more or less half and half, meaning that half of people did have some friends, uh, some Norwegian friends met at, uh, outside of work, uh, at least one, and half of them didn't. Um, both having Norwegian friends uh, at work and having Norwegian friends outside of work was actually influencing the way people felt about their level of integration with Norwegian society. Uh, meaning that these who had more contact, uh, more social contact with Norwegians, or these who had more friends, more Norwegian friends, um, 
felt more integrated into Norwegian society. Uh, they had uh, more positive uh, attitudes toward Norwegians and so on. Uh, but what is interesting is that um, the fact of having Norwegian friends met outside of workplace seemed to have more influence on these things that I mentioned than having Norwegian friends met at workplace. Maybe it is because um, they kind of had additional link to Norwegian society that was something outside of workplace only. Also, probably um, becoming friends with people met outside of work uh, required a bit more effort, and maybe that's the reason uh, why why it turned out to be more uh, more important. We also asked people what they think that Norwegians think about Polish people. Um, we decided to divide this uh, issue into two questions, and first we asked people what. Uh, what they think of Norwegians' attitudes towards people as uh, members of Norwegian society. And uh, most of the answers were rather positive, although the amount of people who were a bit uncertain about this issue was also big. Um, when we asked them to evaluate uh, Norwegians' opinions about Polish people as workers, these answers also were very positive. But what we noticed was that the amount of people who had problems with answering this question was much smaller than the amount of people answering the first question, as well the amount of positive answers uh, was bigger, while negative answers was smaller, which basically <laughs> made us conclude uh, that Polish people may feel a bit more better about themselves or more secure about their position here in Norway as workers <coughs> or co-workers than as uh, members of Norwegian society. Uh, to be fair, we also asked Polish people about their opinions about uh, Norwegian people and to make it more comparable. Um, we also uh, asked two questions, how they would, uh, how they would, what they think of Norwegian people as, uh, as people and what they think about Norwegians as uh, workers. And here, it turned out that um, in both situations, uh, answers were rather positive, with this difference, that um, when people were talking about Norwegians as workers, they were a bit less enthusiastic when they were talking about Norwegians <laughs> as uh, as people, as members of the same society, and so on. Uh, so that is pretty interesting, and um, I, I would be very glad to have a chance to find out why is it so that we feel that we are more um, valued as workers, why at the same time we think that Norwegians are more valuable as people. <coughs> um, if uh, I was about to sum up uh, our research, I would probably have to use a pretty well-known fact, uh, truism even and say that knowing the language and being familiar with people, uh, in this case Norwegians, even having Norwegians among friends, does help. Meaning that it makes people feel more comfortable and uh, more integrated uh, into Norwegian society. Maybe some of them do not want to be integrated. Maybe they would uh, prefer staying within their own group. Uh, maybe they are comfortable with this situation. Uh, that was our huge mistake, actually, not to ask people about that. Uh, but then again, we use the power of uh, common sense and we thought that being integrated, feeling familiar, feeling safe is probably better for both immigrants and from Norway's point of view to put it this way. It is, um, as I said before, common sense would say that um, feeling well increases motivation to, to have a job, to maybe a better job after some time, to participate in culture, to participate in social life, and so on and so on. And I would, uh, I would assume that uh, more active uh, participation of Polish people in, uh, uh, in life here in Norway, both when it comes to work life, and when it comes to cultural life, and when it comes to social life, can only have uh, positive, mm, positive results. Um, yes, I think that would be it. Thank you very much.
Atlanta. And please, please take the report and the infographic. You will find it both here and, uh, and outside. Uh, our next session uh, is going to focus on a picture of uh, Polish people in Norwegian media. And with me, I will have uh, uh, Ingrid Brekke, uh, correspondent from Aftenposten uh, uh, in Berlin in four years. Now you've moved back to Norway. But you're interested in Poland. I've heard that you started to learn Polish too. Is it true? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say anything nice. in Polish now. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome. And uh, Mr. Jakub Gorzimiski from uh, Norwegian Institute of uh, Foreign Studies. Please, uh, is it better? Please take some uh, water also if you want. Uh, I saw it just now. Um, the idea to have this panel discussion started with, uh, actually with myself. I've been living here in Norway more than 20 years and I've been previously also working as a journalist. Um, and everybody who's been living here for a while, we can see that the picture of the Poland we know from Poland and the picture of the Poland presented here in Norway, that two, that two different pictures, there's a gap between uh, the two Polands. Um, and I would like to talk a little bit about that. Uh, but uh, first I would like to ask you, Jakob, you've been living here also for more than 20 years. And, and how has the picture of uh, Polish people and Poland changed during the 90s and, and the last uh, years after 2004? I think it's important to understand that the picture is a kind of um, a dynamic thing. When I came to Norway in 87, uh, the situation was uh, completely different uh, from what we have uh, today. There has been uh, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, there, have been, there, there has been a very deep uh, change in the Polish uh, uh, politics at home, which has also influenced the image of Poles in uh, Norway, and then uh, the whole relationship uh, changed. In 1999, Poland uh, became a NATO member, which meant that we uh, became uh, allies. In 2004, Poland became uh, uh, the member of the European Union, which meant that uh, Poles got access to the Norwegian labor market, and this uh, started this coaching uh, flow of um, uh, Poles to Norway. And this had to change the image as well, because uh, uh, you, you relate to a group of people living in your country in a different manner when they are, from, for instance, like between five and 10,000 uh, people of Polish origin, which was the situation uh, on the eve of the EU enlargement, and then you experience a kind of inflow of a new group of migrants who are, uh, who, who are much more visible in the landscape. Uh, so, so, so this was one of the factors that has, uh, that has uh, influenced uh, this image. And then uh, we have to understand that the uh, economic dimension of the Polish Norwegian relationship has uh, changed. To say, for instance, when I came to Norway, the average uh, wage in Poland was uh, uh, between 20 and 25 US dollars per month, not per day, not per hour. When was uh, that? 20, 25 US dollars at the black market uh, exchange rate. Uh, today, the, 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 the economic uh, motivation for coming to Norway is still there, but uh, not as, uh, uh, as big as it used to be 20, 25 years ago. So, so I think that uh, all those issues have, um, uh, contribu have contributed to changing the image of Poland. Uh, 25 years ago, it was uh, mostly an idea of uh, Poles being very skillful uh, uh, strawberry pickers. Uh, today, it's an idea of Poles uh, being very skillful uh, construction, construction workers. I think in uh, years to come, we will see the growth of uh, another group of Poles people, uh, for instance, uh, coming from the second uh, generation of Poles moving to Poland after the, moving to Norway after the uh, EU enlargement, and uh, we will probably see similar situation to the, the one uh, that is characteristic of, uh, for instance, the Pakistani diaspora. We have uh, seen a uh, minister of the Norwegian government of uh, Pakistan, who is I don't exclude completely the situation that in some 10, 15, 20 years time we will see also some uh, people of Polish origins very high on the 
Norwegian uh, uh, social uh, range. Mm. I agree with you, and I also think that uh, that's more and more articles about uh, Polish workers and the impact of uh, Polish people on Norwegian uh, economics. But still, if you make, if you search on the net, most of the articles in Norwegian newspapers are not about culture and about uh, how great Polish people are, but it's about alcohol smuggling, it's about uh, criminality, it's about, uh, well, what should I say, uh, uh, car accidents. Uh, why is that so, Ingrid? Uh, unfortunately, this is also part of how news are generally made, but um, it's always the, the negative things and the dramatic things and the crime rates and stuff like that. We are more concerned about that. Hmm. Uh, I think that that's actually the main answer because uh, I don't think, uh, as a Norwegian, I don't think that the general image of Polish people in Norway are that they are criminal. Uh, I think it's like they are very good workers and they're very religious. This is like the main, and, and these are not, um, it's very limited, but it's, it's not a bad image. And I think if you look at what sort of like the Roma people from Romania, they have the biggest headlines, the most um, coverage, and that's all negative. Mm. Oh. So this is sort of what the media is like, and, and I don't think um, Polish people should feel that they have a negative image because of this, because it's not true, and it's very important. Okay. If I may add uh, something, I think that uh, when thinking about policy in Norway, we should think in terms of uh, uh, sizes meaning that we have to do with the situation when, uh, where we have a, a city of, let us say, 200,000 people living in the city, uh, living next to another group of uh, people as well. And uh, if we were to follow the news from a city of 200,000, uh, with a population of 200,000 people in Poland, for instance, we would also discover that the picture presented in media is not necessarily the, 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 the real one. Media, as uh, Ingrid has uh, rightly underlined, uh, are pre very much preoccupied with uh, things spectacular and special. So, so the, 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 there is a long uh, discussion going on to what extent one can rely on the image uh, presented in media as a, something, as a kind of uh, reflection of reality. This is not necessarily uh, the, the case. So this is also very much the same thing with uh, the image of Poles in Norway. Media, Norwegian media, most people occupied with uh, things specific and special, and uh, th this is also uh, somehow reflected in the, the image of Poles. Hmm. I think it's always different to look at your country from outside than when you live in, in, in your own country and, and, and read the, the, your own newspapers. And, uh, Inge, you've been living in Berlin in, uh, in four years, so I'd just like to ask you shortly, uh, how is the image of Norway? Uh, seen from uh, from Berlin. Uh, it's also very simple. It's beautiful nature, very expensive, welfare state. <laughs> the, these are the things people connect with Norway, and uh, it's also it's very. Much. It's yeah, it's very positive, but it's also very limited. <laughs> and in the beginning, I always tried to explain to to Germans and, and other Europeans that oh, we also have our problems. But I just stopped because, in comparison with the rest of Europe, it doesn't make any sense actually. <laughs> but we would also like to tell people that we also have culture and music and high technology, and but it, it really doesn't work that way. <laughs> this, this is, these are the problems with national images, mm -hmm. and uh, we should all just be happy we're not Romania. I mean, it's, it's like <laughs> the, the images are are there and they are changing, as, as you said, they are really changing all the time and, and uh, I think the image of uh, yeah, the image of Poland and Polish people in Norway are two different things but, but uh, especially the image of what I know more about is the image of Poland in, in Europe because uh, when I lived in, in Berlin it's very close to Poland and the Germans are of course very concerned about the neighbor uh, the neighbor country which they view uh, extremely positive. 
uh, and they have really worked hard on coming to terms with Poland about the war and about everything. Uh, and this, are, this, of course, from both sides. But, but and and uh, they have been like uh, Germany has been also supporting Poland in the EU and and as a journalist and uh, um, to see how Poland has been rising in the EU system and as a European country it's extremely impressive I mean with democracy with a uh, low level of corruption uh, with uh, mixed opinions when it comes to that <laughs> yeah but I mean in the, if you only relate to the statistics yeah. and you have to compare with other post-communist countries of course yeah. you can't compare yeah. to France or, or Britain but I mean if you look at, at the post-communist countries and you think about it's 25 years, it's not very old, 24 even. It's not a very long time in these oh. terms. Mm. I think everyone is extremely impressed. And and when I go to Poland and I talk to Polish people and I tell them, oh, I love being in Poland, uh, I love the food, I love the, the... You have so much interest in history, beautiful cities, and, and I'm also very impressed about how the EU money is being spent because it's not like just receiving money and that's it. You have to really... Yeah. And the Polish people are all like, why? Why are you interested? Why do you like no, why? I want they to cannot, know. They can't we really believe it. And, and, what was um, your first meeting with yes. Poland? <laughs> and, and maybe for me it's... I mean, it's, it's one thing is the journalist part, which is more like, uh, of course, there are different opinions, but it's it's more professionally based. But then, of course, it's also the personal feeling of being there. And um, maybe it's also that uh, I got this impossible task to cover um, Germany and nine other countries, I think, Central Europe, and I didn't know anything. And I just started, and, and Poland was the easiest one, and it was the one with the best atmosphere. I had this feeling that um, part of the American dream was still alive in the sense that people um, thought that if they only tried and worked hard enough, they would regain their position in Europe, and they would succeed as individuals. And that's probably also why a lot of you are, are here today, because um, this idea of taking their faith in their own hand. And it's, it's probably very unfair uh, because this has also uh, a little bit to do with political regimes and, and, and uh, the other country I traveled a lot in was Hungary, which is sort of going the other direction now, mm. in, in my opinion. So the contrast maybe also made me um, become this, uh, as in, in Norway we have this saying, uh, friend of Norway, Norgisland. And I'm sort of the friend of Poland, I feel, because it's not that I know a, a lot and, and have, I never lived there and don't understand the language and anything. But what I've seen uh, has made me want to come back and, and learn more. Um, mm. Well, thank you, great words. Uh, I would like to come a little bit, a little bit back to the to the Norwegian uh, everyday reality. A uh, few months ago, I, I found myself uh, calling several journalists in Norway on behalf of uh, Polish Norwegian Chamber of Commerce, uh, talking to them and and um, uh, about the story which I I thought was very interesting uh, about the story about the. Um, succeeding businessmen in Norway. And I've been talking to many journalists in different newspapers saying, okay, I know that you, you have to cover the, the crisis and you have to cover the conflict and you have to cover things happening, actual accidents and stuff, but, but you know, there are many people in Norway who really make, who really succeed. Uh, and I know a couple of them uh, from, the, from the Chamber of Commerce uh, who really make establish themselves as a businessman in Norway. Wouldn't it be an interesting story to show the differences between the Polish and the Norwegian market? What do they do? What are, what, and I, nobody was interested. They thought the story was good, but they thought that nobody would like to read it, really. Uh, and then I started to think, um, can we as a Polish community do something ourselves? <coughs> Like uh, Moja Norvega, it's a great channel for, you know, taking control of the picture of, uh, of ourselves instead of waiting for the media. Yeah. 
I had a very interesting experience some years ago when I discovered, for instance, that uh, the third biggest taxpayer in Norway was, uh, in fact, a Polish businessman who got a contract on one of the oil weeks uh, in the northern uh, uh, sea uh, and uh, probably had a very bad uh, tax advisor because he paid something like 60 million Norwegian coins in uh, tax to Norway, meaning that uh, uh, he didn't manage to, to somehow find uh, uh, some tax uh, loopholes in the system. Uh, but it was a very positive, it, it was a posi very positive experience because he was presented as a one coming to Norway to do business and uh, one paying his own uh, his uh, taxes, which was not necessarily the case with all those Norwegian uh, financial uh, tycoons. So, so I think this, way, this is one of the ways of, of, of making uh, uh, broader population aware of the fact. I think also that when discussing uh, the, the, the issue of uh, images, pictures, it's important to understand that uh, media present uh, a very simplified uh, picture and then uh, uh, this has also something to do with what I would uh, like to term as mental, mental inertia, meaning that uh, we all have uh, some uh, ideas and images about uh, the others, uh, Poles about Norwegians, Norwegians about Poles, and those images uh, not necessarily follow the, 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 the real developments, meaning that uh, uh, many people in Norway still thinking about the Poland in terms of Poland uh, uh, 20 years ago or 25 years ago. They don't see the progress that has been made in uh, Poland over the last uh, 25 years. Uh, we still also have a very simplified picture of uh, who Norwegians are and uh, what is the relationship with, uh, for instance, nature and uh, culture and so on and so on. So I think it's really important to work hard on uh, uh, making those images and pictures and stereotypes uh, more close to the reality. Mm. When we talked together yesterday, you said uh, it will take a generation. People have to find out how to and uh, deal with the society, they have to find their own ways. They driven we have a totally different impact on that. Uh, can't we do something else, some quick fix? <laughs> Any suggestions? You have a suggestion? Yes? I know some a few uh, journalists and uh, the way they are thinking. I think the problem is that uh, uh, writing about uh, steady going, the good life is quite boring. Well, <laughs> the reason they write about the bad situation is because it is, has a drama in it and a story. So if you find the positive example, positive drama, yes, where uh, it is something brilliant, uh, mm. sudden turn of fate, <laughs> and uh, something going on. Okay, get inspired there, people. <laughs> yes, then the um, <coughs> I think it's so in the right way. Yes, I do. Yes, yeah. And, and uh, I, I was very positively surprised, um, I think a month ago, in my newspaper on Saturday had a page about food, Polish food. And I thought, um, uh, like the recipes, we always have this uh, in the weekends. So, so it was like, just like sometimes you have Thai food, this weekend we have Polish food. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And I think this is the sort of really s s small steps that are um, small, small signs that things are, are changing. And of course, uh, because there are so many uh, people <coughs> living here, there are also a lot of Norwegian people who meet Polish people and they get interested in, in the food. Maybe they, I also know someone who, because they had a, a Polish uh, lady cleaning their house, she invited them and she and the, and the whole family traveled to some extremely tiny village somewhere in, in Poland and they were like, wow, it was good. So these sort of, of small things are happening all the time and, and it will slowly change. But it takes a lot of time and I think you are very right in, in that most Norwegians have this image of Poland that is very old. And we see all of Eastern Europe as this grey somewhere uh, everything is the same and uh, it's very poor and, and boring and, and all my Norwegian friends say like wow when they come to Dansk and Warsaw exactly. and, uh, that's what happens when Norwegians actually go to Poland they react somewhat like me 
I mean, it's like wow, and, and it's, it's it's so easy to be. Why didn't you tell us? So yeah, <laughs> this, uh, uh, and and also because uh, the EU money well spent, and and uh, you can see that these renovated, beautiful old uh, part of cities, and uh, wow. the roads are much better than in Norway, and all yeah. <laughs> so, so so if you only and I think because of that, and because there are a lot of cheap flights, no Norwegians have have this. Now it's uh, I think. Berlin are sort of taking over from London and people are always looking for where should they go next and I would not be surprised if, if maybe uh, Warsaw, mm. I mean Krakow is something different, it's a different sort of tourism, mm. but that more people would like to go to Warsaw I think, uh, yeah, because I it's the same that. sort of exciting city as, as mm. Berlin, it's, mm. yeah. I yeah. have a friend who said that Warsaw is his new Berlin after I exactly. think. Yeah. Uh, this well. um, Jakob, you would like to? Uh, I, I think that uh, when talking about the relationship between uh, individuals and ethnic groups and media, it's important to underline that the best thing that can happen to any individual and any ethnic group is not to end up in the, on the first page of uh, media, no matter <laughs> Norwegian or Polish, but because it really means that uh, everything uh, works uh, rather smoothly and uh, the, the, the best thing uh, that could happen is to namely have uh, a, a page in media devoted to think, things like Polish cuisine or something like that because it really means that the, the, the relationship between those two groups has uh, somehow been normalized. Mm. Yeah, it's going the right, in the right direction. We are running out of time. Uh, I would like uh, to thank you. Um, and um, I've been thinking now that we are really in the exciting times with the social media, which makes everybody possible to take control over the channels. So we, I mean, I love often posting, but um, it's not the only true story uh, being that not the only true stories being told uh, there. Now everybody can tell their own stories, and I think my Norvegia, which is organizing the seminar today, um, is doing a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will not, uh, we will not have a short break, um, so we can talk a little bit together, take a cup of tea, uh, and we will see each other here in 20 minutes.